Hello my study buddies, painting buddies, workmates and procrastinators and to those of you still staying indoors. Welcome back to the studio or welcome if this is your first time in the new space. Whatever it is that brings you here, whatever you're up to, let's just spend the next hour together keeping each other accountable, keeping each other focused and if nothing else just keeping each other company. Let me know down below in the comments what you're up to but uh, for now I'm just going to get started with a painting. Today I am going to be painting hopefully a couple of um, images of skies. I'm working on the September Patreon bundle and that was themed clouds and skies. So to start with I'm going to do like a sort of galaxy night sky hopefully. We'll see how it turns out. Um, we'll see if it ends up being something that I feel worth sending out to someone but if not it's nice fun practice and painting skies is always lovely and therapeutic. I have to say I did film this video yesterday, um, different paintings obviously but um, I realised about half an hour in that I hadn't pressed record on the overhead camera so all you were getting was me talking but my microphone as you can see is connected to this camera so you can even hear that anyway but um, here's a fun clip of me realising that that's what happened. So yeah, here we are. I've learnt my lesson and uh, hopefully things go a bit more smoothly today. I'm working on Arteza watercolour paper, I think. It's from one of their sketchbooks. I just ripped out a couple of pages and cut it down to the size I wanted. And I'm using Holbein gouache and um, just regular washi tape, just a thin washi tape here. Uh, but any information on things will be down in the description if you want to have a look. I'll also leave links there to the references that I'm looking at as well. Um, references are up on my screen over here if that's why you're wondering, if you're wondering why I'm looking up in this direction. So I'm just going to try and do quite a broad start. I do find that my Prussian blue and like ultramarine and just generally my darker colours in this gouache need a couple of coats because they're not as opaque um, but once I start getting some white in there it should look a bit better, less streaky. So I'm just trying to do a broad start, in fact I probably should have started down at the bottom with the lighter colours. But how is everyone anyway? It's been a long time, I had a look um, the other day just to see when I last made one of these videos and it was six months ago. Can you believe that? I really thought at the time when I made the last one of these videos that I was going to do them quite regularly. It seemed like the perfect thing for that time. We'd recently, I think, gone into lockdown and yeah, it was nice to be able to chat and hang out. But that obviously didn't happen. Um, as it turned out, I really wasn't in the mood to chat and paint and um, I didn't want to come on here with a bad vibe. Um, I know that a lot of people use these videos to sort of escape, especially at that time, so I didn't want to come on and add to the stress and that feeling, that like weight at the time. Um, and I also didn't want to come on and be fake and pretend that everything was fine and dandy because I know that at the time I was kind of going through it as well. How many times am I going to say at the time, like in the other times, in the bad times? Um, yeah, doing a lot better now. We have moved house. That wasn't really on the cards until it came on the cards. Uh, I think a lot of like being stuck indoors all the time and both of us being together in that space all the time really highlighted some issues that we weren't really aware of until we were um, just with that space. So yeah, eventually we decided to have a look at moving, see if we could find somewhere new and we love this new place, it's amazing, it's been great. Um, the moving process was quite stressful, just the actual move itself was stressful. Um, looking for a flat wasn't too difficult, a lot of our viewings were online and um, eventually when we were seeing them in person we just wore masks and um, it was actually quite nice being able to go in and see the properties without an estate agent following you around because they would quite often wait outside while you're looking at the property and that gave you the freedom to really take your time and have a good look. Um, that said, it really never really made a difference looking for a flat in London. It's always the same and there were a lot of things that we ended up not getting. There was one that we absolutely loved and after offering above what they were asking, we were outbid quite quickly. And like, we're just talking about renting here. Like, it's really competitive. But 
Um, silver lining is that the next day we found this place and we absolutely loved it and we're really happy. It's just amazing. Um, there's just a nicer atmosphere here. We're only one road away from where we were before because I really liked our area and didn't want to leave that but we're a step back from the main road so we can actually sleep at night without noise and like cars beeping and people shouting and just like drunk people walking past all the time so that's really nice um and it's just nice it's really peaceful we're surrounded by green space and you would never know that we're so close to where we were before and um I still pass our old flat anytime I leave the house which to be honest isn't very often but it's nice to like check on it, have a look up there. There are new people in there and a little bit of gossip. I uh, saw our old flat listed online when they were trying to rent it out and they're now asking for an extra £300 a month on what we were paying for rent, which is just insane, especially right now. I can't imagine the thought behind raising rent prices, but it seems like they got it because the place has been let. Um, and yeah, it's just so not worth it. So we're paying less now for that place for a place that's so much better we have outside space here and everything's so much more maintained our old place was just falling apart we had actual holes in the walls where mice would come out in the winter so good luck to the new tenants with that luckily Thierry sorted that out for us eventually but um before we got Thierry and the only reason we got we were allowed to have Thierry because you're not allowed pets in that building the only reason we were allowed to have Thierry is that we had mentioned the pest problem and they let us get a cat to sort it out. Also our front door at the old place um, had cracks in it so big that you could actually see outside, you could see daylight outside. And we had like whole mushrooms about that size growing on the front door and no matter how many times you got rid of them, they would just come back. <laughs> so uh, yeah, um, I'm a lot happier here. I feel like this place is taken care of a lot better. We have like set people that we can contact whenever we need to. We have like emails and phone numbers and anything. I mean, even when things first started getting bad back in March, we um, tried to get in contact with our landlord to talk about our changing financial situation just to see if we could talk about it. And we got no response. Like, I guess they're just sort of waiting until we really can't afford to pay rent anymore and then they'll get rid of us. But in the meantime, they're not bothered about talking about it. So yeah, we're, we're a lot happier here and I'm really glad we took that, that leap into finding a new place. And Thierry's happy, he loves it. He's still got space to run around and be a nuisance. As always, I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing yet. I'm just trying to figure out how to blend this like peachier area into um, what's gonna be quite a dark area up here. But I think I'll uh, be able to sort of disguise the gradient as I go along. It's also kind of difficult in this room to see the painting exactly just because of the skylight above there's quite a glare um I, I, I like this room it's a lot smaller than my old studio but there's enough space here um the lighting it's pretty good at certain times of the day but I, I really it's not ideal having just a skylight because of like the glare on things and also for filming i don't think it's a particularly flattering angle to have light just shining down on my big shiny forehead like not great but other than that, I don't have many complaints about this space. So yeah, the move itself was stressful. I really thought I had it figured out, had everything under control. Um, but as the time drew nearer, there were just more and more tasks building up that needed doing. And I was trying to work around it. Um, and then <laughs> and then I cut my hand open. Um, and that really, really scuppered a lot of our moving plans because I'd saved a lot for the week before and it was a, exactly a week before we moved that I cut my hand open with this thing. Um, I use this to scrape my palette after I've done some painting and you have to be really careful with these. It is like just a blade. Um, and I wasn't scraping my palette. I was using it like an idiot to open a can of paint. I was holding a can of paint like this using the blade like that and ended up cutting into my hand. It was quite scary. It was quite a deep one, um, lots of blood and I was home alone. Um, it was just all a bit much, but uh, got to A&E, got stitches, um, had a panic attack while I was getting the stitches as well. The whole thing was a lot, but 
could have been so much worse um, and it just meant that while we're building up to the move that last like crucial week of preparing I was really kind of I, I couldn't do as much as I had wanted to and that led to just a lot of stress and like a big backlog of loads of things so there's a lot of work that I've been needing to catch up on like I said I think I mentioned this is for September's Patreon bundle I'm not too behind now with Patreon stuff um, because I do normally send out the previous month's bundle at the start of the next month so um, for me to send these bundles out next week I would be on schedule but I'd ideally have this work finished already to be able to um, it's just ready to be sent out. I haven't really figured out how I'm going to blend this, if I'm going to do like more of the scrubby um, technique to it, or if I'll go more like I have down here. Yeah, otherwise things have been good. We've been here for about two months, two months exactly to the day today. Um, and yeah, it's just full of light. It's really cozy um, and just more, more of a community feel, I guess. And it just feels like somewhere we can be for the next, um, couple of years maybe um, before uh, everything changed this year we were aiming to save up to buy somewhere um, this well next year maybe but that's not really on the cards anymore for now um, but this is a place that I feel we can make a home out of for the next however long still it's this this area here where we go from blue to red is a challenge um i think i'll go because the darker color that i'm using is a mixture of red and blue if i can get a readier version down here yes i mean kind of <laughs> getting ahead of myself already but i think I think that could work and then if I blend that back into the blue and then in the middle we'll do the same kind of thing but more with a bit more white in there and obviously this is just kind of the base I'll neaten it up as I go along but it's good to know um, that I've got the basic structure of it down so I'm not putting loads of detail into one area in a certain colour and then realising that it doesn't blend with the rest of it. So let's talk Inktober um, because I've had many questions about this, um, which makes sense. I have taken part in Inktober for several years now and it's been such a huge part of my time online and in like in the art community uh, so yeah I've had many emails and messages and just people wondering what my stance on it this is this year um, obviously I'm not taking part and uh, I don't know if people will believe me on this or not but I actually wasn't planning on taking part this year anyway um, at the start of this year in fact maybe at the end of last year I had done a lot of planning and like set a lot of goals of what I wanted to work on and a lot of it was like personal projects and when I tried to figure out how I could fit that in um just taking part in a monthly challenge like Inktober wasn't factored in I really broke down my year 
in chunks um, like almost month by month on what I wanted to be working on when and then everything changed and I haven't worked on any of the things I wanted to work on this year. It's been quite sad to look back on what I wanted to do and like part of it is um, the virus and stuff like that but part of it is just me not um, working smart, not prioritising um, the things that I wanted to do. Uh, so yeah, I didn't plan on doing October. Basically I thought if I do take part in any way I'll do like one thing, um, like instead of doing a painting or something every day, I would do one big ink drawing that I could, I don't know, just post and share. Uh, but then obviously, um, well, to be honest, even if I was gonna do just the one thing, October came out of nowhere for me this year, so I wasn't even ready to do that if I'd wanted to. Um, but then the um, plagiarism stuff came about and um, yeah, just kind of sealed the deal for me, I guess. It's a hard one to talk about because I feel like there's still so much that isn't known yet. It's just not a black and white thing, there's so much grey area in it. Um, and really all I've seen is Alfonso's video. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go and find it. I'm not going to sum it up because, as you're about to find out, I really don't know enough about it to like be an authority on it as a topic. Um, but I've seen Alfonso's video, I also then looked into whatever Jake Parker had said um, about his side of it and I also, that was back in August I think and this morning before filming this video I decided to have a look and see if there'd been any update before I talk about this um, and as far as I can tell there hasn't been anything since Jake's initial statement um, and yeah it's a hard one to talk about because I don't know, I don't know, there is no like set answer uh, I think that when I first started watching Alfonso's video I really did think that there are just some like fundamental concepts in art that are going to come up um, in different books and uh, some like universal themes and things that it wouldn't be uncommon to show up in several different art books especially if you're doing something as niche as a book specifically about inking if there was a book that was specifically clear about watercolour I think you'd have the same kind of thing where the same topics are being brought up. Where the um, issues come in is for me um, certain the structuring of certain things and um, in some places the terminology that's used um, it is almost too similar I would say too similar um, to be a coincidence uh, and that's why it doesn't really make sense to me because to me it almost seems too obvious, um, especially as you can see like from Jake's Instagram and stuff, he's read Alfonso's book or he's at least um, recommended it in the past, it seems quite brazen to um, then copy it so much um, and that's where I think maybe is there like has the book been outsourced and Jake's just put his name on it not knowing that it was um, a lot of the stuff was ripped from Alfonso's book or um, is it a case that it is just really similar? Is it like they've both learnt things from the same places, they've both used the same sources in making their books and someone's name is now being like dragged through the mud? <sighs> it's just such a hard one. But yeah, that's where I stand. I think that there are some major similarities there that don't add up to me at all. Um, but what we can take from it is that as a community, we are more than like one hashtag or one person and it's been really nice to see people still creating this month in whatever way they want to whether it is Inktober or Peachtober or Brushtober or um, Draw the Weed or anything that's going on like we can still create and be part of something that transcends like one particular thing and I hope that we can find out more about what's gone on I hope that there will be justice I hope that um, I hope that both of them are going to be okay um, just kind of sucks for both of them, to be honest. This, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening with this. Um, I think I'm going to do some blending, get things looking a bit smoother. This area is where it's all sort of falling apart. I'll get there. I think once I start adding some detail, I mean, there isn't a huge amount of detail I can add on, like, the night sky, but I'll do what I can.
I have a huge amount of things to talk about regarding like what I've been reading, what I've been watching. Um, so we need to crack on with that because there is a whole new category for this section just for this month. Um, but it's games I've been playing um, because after a certain amount of time in lockdown, just watching things got really boring. So I, yeah, got into playing some games. Um, Ozzy downloaded Red Dead Redemption 2 on the PlayStation. So we spent a long time. That was like a long period of our lives where that was like our nightly routine. We were both playing it together. Like one person would play a bit, the other person would play a bit. He did a lot of the missions and I would do a lot of the exploring and like trying to find treasure maps and stuff like that. Um, and it's sort of, it's a video game. It's like you're part of like a ragtag team of outlaws and you can go out and have shootouts and stuff. It was a lot of fun. We had a horse called Garbanzo, um, who we loved dearly. Um, it was just, honestly, it felt like it was real. We spent so much time playing that game and we were so in that world. The artwork is beautiful. Like the scenery, the detail they put into it is just mesmerizing. So yeah, we spent a long, long time in there and yeah, it felt like it was our lives for a little while. So that was a lot of fun. And if anyone has any game recommendations coming off that, because we've finished it now, um, and we're looking for something else that we can play together. If anyone has any game recommendations that have a similar, like, deep world and um, great art would be great as well, um, let me know. And then again, the new FIFA's out now, so whether Ozzy will want to play anything with me anymore, we'll see if I can drag him away from that game. And then we got into board games, um, just trying like different board games, just as a different way to entertain ourselves instead of sitting in front of a screen all night, every night. Um, so, well, not quite a board game, but we started playing Karam, which is, I think, an Indian board game. Is it a board game? Does it count as a board game? But you have like a big board. Um, if I could describe it, it's sort of like snooker or pool, don't know the difference, on a big wooden board with four holes and you're just trying to pop um, these little discs for, by flicking them um, and like bouncing them off the sides. You can only flick them forward. It's so much fun. It's really, really fun. Um, Ozzy's mum has like a genuine carom board, beautiful big one, like beautifully carved discs um, that she brought back from India. I think, I think Ozzy's parents met in India. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure his mum lived there for a while, I think. Um, but yeah, that has been a favourite of ours um, and since we moved we've actually kept it uh, so we'll see if she asks for it back at any point but for now we've claimed it as our own so that's been a lot of fun and then we looked into just different board games that we could play so um, Carcassonne <laughs> has been one of our favourites um, it's like a territorial board game that's based in like different tiles and you claim a tile, it could be a river, it could be a town that you own. Um, it's quite strategic, but it's also not that complicated and it's really fun. Um, and we're really evenly matched on it. We're both quite competitive, but it's nice that um, we're even, because Ozzy wins Karam every time. Um, but with this one, sometimes I win. <laughs> in fact, I would say I win this one more often than he does. And we've also got um, Bananagrams now, um, which is kind of like Scrabble, uh, like a word search, like you put together words with a certain amount of letters and you link them all together. Um, and we play that quite often, like that's, that gets whipped out every, every few nights really, because it's just one that you can quickly play a couple of games and then put it away. Okay, I think I need to, I'm focusing on the easier bit to blend. I think I need to move along to the bit that's a bit more challenging. Um, we've also been playing, in fact, we haven't played it for a while, but we discovered this card game called Egyptian Rat Screw. Um, I don't know how we found it. It might be a really common game that I'd just never heard of before, but um, I've been using my Loish uh, playing cards, which has been really nice. It's been nice to finally have a use for them. Um, can't even remember the rules. We haven't played it for a while, but it's kind of like Snap with extra rules. And that's a lot of fun. If you're looking for a new card game to play, I would really recommend it. 
and then otherwise oh i've been loving jigsaw puzzles so much i've got so into it i've got like quite a good system going now um with my mum and some of her friends we're all just like someone buys one and then it gets cycled through each of us like a big group of us and do i have time to show you this um 3d puzzles i did my first one recently it's what of the taj mahal i think you can see a bit of it i showed you better yesterday but i went to a friend's house um to check in and saw that she had this amazing 3d puzzle and i was just wowed and then a week or so later in the post out of nowhere it arrived um so get your friend like linden like that girl she looks after me it's just amazing it was such a nice surprise um and it was so challenging so infuriating like i hated it and loved it at the same time um but it was it was a lot of fun i'm i'm I think I'm quite into 3D puzzles now. I don't know which one I'm gonna do next. I think I need to buy one that I can um, do myself and then spread the, spread the love, give it to other people. Cause this one is going to my mum now and then I think we're gonna send it to Lyndon's brother. I apologize if painting wise, this video isn't super interesting. But I can say for me, it is really relaxing. It's really fun. Because you're probably looking at this wondering what it is, like, where's this going? I think it'll come together. As long as it doesn't start getting muddy, <laughs> which I am concerned about, um, I think it'll be okay. Let me just check. I'm just having a look at the reference to see where I'm at. Okay, okay, I think <laughs> more blending. Um, and then yeah, apart from that, uh, lots of crosswords. Been loving a crossword. Um, I have my little crossword book that I work from and I have Sudoku on my phone that I do quite often as well. But it's been fun to just find different ways to entertain myself. Um, I know that at some point when things, when restrictions get a bit um, more lenient, uh, we'd like to start doing like games nights here or like dinner parties, obviously not with more than six people for now, but it'd be fun. Um, I think people need it at the moment. But this is a kind of space where it does feel more like we can have people around. It does feel more sociable. Um, like with our old place, it didn't, it wasn't as easy to fit people into the living room. Whereas now we've got like proper space for it. Oh, I like this. It looks kind of fiery, doesn't it? Oh. Don't get too excited. Don't get carried away. Right, well, um, let's take a quick break. Um, just have a stretch, have a walk around if that's something you want to do. Uh, grab a drink. I'm going to grab a drink and I will see you back here in a minute. All right, let's talk books, films and TV because I have been consuming a lot. I've got notes over here as well as my reference. So if you see me looking over there, because um, there's a lot to catch up on six months worth. Um, although I haven't been reading too much recently, I did get a few, a few good books right at the start of lockdown and pretty much throughout the last few months. It's only recently since we moved that I've been less on track with my reading. Um, so I think the first book I have here is The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry, which is sort of about this widowed woman in oldie England. I'm really bad at history, so I cannot place the time of that story whatsoever. But it's sort of about a town that's been taken over by rumors uh, about a like 
almost mythical creature that's terrorizing the town and you don't know if it's in their heads if it's like um a hysteria that's spreading through the town if it's covering up for something some issue some other issue that's going on there um and it was quite interesting it wasn't really my style i thought it was really nicely written i don't know if sarah perry writes poetry but it had quite a poetic cadence to it like there was a way of writing that i really enjoyed um it was just the story that wasn't that interesting to me but i think a lot of you guys would like that book the cover alone is gorgeous um yeah i think i can imagine you guys really liking that book um so do check it out um i, I still enjoyed it it just wasn't my style it wasn't for me 100 percent um, I did read Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. I am working my way through Stephen King novels and because I've been getting recommendations from you guys, I really haven't gone wrong yet. So yeah, I really liked it, really disturbing. Um, I think a lot of people know what it's about. I didn't know what it was about going into it. I know that there's been a film recently, but um, it's sort of about this family. It seems quite autobiographical. I think when I read the prelude to it or like his notes at the beginning it's based on an experience that he had um with one of his children um but it's about death um it's about accepting death i suppose uh but yeah really interesting really dark i would really recommend that one i loved that can't tell if I'm blending or it's this this area here is just really really challenging I think I need to get more of that sort of lilac-y color without it being too dark blend it with the red sort of. Uh, what else have I read? Oh, I read um, My Sister, The Serial Killer by uh, Ayinka Braithwaite. Um, it was a short story, shortish, um, pretty simple, and it's about this young woman in Nigeria who is sort of constantly second to her sister, who's more beautiful, more popular, um, and also a serial killer. Um, it was interesting. It was nice to read a book set in Nigeria. I am a quarter Nigerian, um, so that was fun. Again, not 100% for me. I found it almost too simple, quite predictable, but it was fun. It was. I feel like it was meant to be simple and fun. Um, so it'd be a good one just to check out if you want to read something a bit different or just something that you can sort of breeze through. just to sort of bridge that gap from cool to warm it's like a lilac but it's also quite grey and I think that helped somewhere with that. I'm spending a lot of time using this viewfinder as a way to see the painting as a whole because from this angle there's so much glare on the paper itself. And also, as always with gouache, it dries a different colour to how it goes on. So areas that I thought were blended quite well, once they're dry, have more 
of a contrast than I'd like. This is a lot of fun though. If anyone wants some sort of art therapy. Like I said, I'll have the reference for this down below if you want to give it a go yourselves. It's the kind of thing that even if you make a mistake, you just keep going in, piling on different colours and seeing what works, what looks good. Oh, I also got through, I think when I last spoke, I'd just been to the library and picked up the books. I really can't remember, but one of the books was The History Boys by David Bennett, which is the play, uh, which is also a film now. Yes, of course it's a film. I've seen it a few times. Um, but yeah, I loved it. I love the film anyway. And I think having seen the film, um, it helped with the style of um, the play. It helped me really imagine it and just see it um like playing out in my head as I read it and um because the film has the stage um actors um including James Corden and Dominic something <laughs> um but because the original um actors from the play are in the film it's also interesting to see um, how those parts were written and how well they did fit with those actors. Um, so it's made me want to read more plays um, because I haven't really done that since school. Um, I do think that was a good one to start with and again that's quite a short one. I don't know what this dirty bit is. I don't know what I was going for there. I don't know if you can hear that but I think it's starting to rain up there. It can be a relaxing sound and um, hopefully it doesn't end up being too distracting for the video. Next up, I read um, Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. Um, and I don't normally read like romantic e books. I mean, there was more to it than the romance in it, but I really got swept up in that romance. I really, yeah, I really got into it and that has made me want to read more romantic books. If anyone has any recommendations for books with a bit of romance in that's not too cheesy, I'd love that because the other great thing about this book was that there was so much more to it. And I'd, I think Delia Owens um, studied the, um, I don't know, I don't know what that's called, like uh, study of like animals and stuff. Sorry, I'm having a proper like empty brain moment. Basically the book's about this young girl that grows up in this sort of swamp land pretty much by herself and she knows a lot about the animals there and the wildlife and um, eventually someone else enters her life there. Um, and there's more to it than that but it was really interesting, it just felt like it was coming from someone that knew a lot about what they were talking about and it was um, stuff that I was really interested in learning about. Um, it was a really beautifully written book. I kind of got over it towards the end. Um, I think sometimes when books just don't go in the direction I want them to, I get a bit bored. Um, I've become a bit of a brat and I think you should have done it how I wanted you to do it. Uh, but 
it all in all it was a really nice book i really enjoyed that one i was also reading 1q84 1q84 by haruki murakami it just wasn't for me i tried, really tried um it's really slow so many people have said what an amazing book it is so i know that um there are a lot of you out there that probably would enjoy it and i'll give it another go eventually um but it wasn't doing it for me at the time it's sort of set in set in japan over but in i can't even describe it i can't I, it's the kind of thing that i can't sum up as a story i read the first book out of three and like no, nothing really happened because it it's such a bigger story i do feel like i didn't get anywhere with it and i know that where i got with it will eventually come back and mean something but I didn't, I didn't come out of it feeling satisfied. I didn't feel like it, it had been worth the time at the time. Um, but I will go back to it eventually. I've also had more like Murakami recommendations from you guys. So I'm sure, I mean, he's a really acclaimed author. Although someone also mentioned that he talks a lot about boobs in his books and like describes them in a lot of detail. And since they mentioned that, that's all I could see. Um, so yeah, that's kind of distracting. I received a really nice book in um, my PO box. Was it my PO box? I think it was my PO box. Um, from and the return address on it, I think, was to someone called Nikki. But the note in it was from someone called Sarah. So Sarah or Nikki, thank you so much. Um, it was a book called Homebody by John Thorne, and it's just like a collection of like prose about the home and like the little quirks of a home little sort of stories to do with it it's a really small short book i would love for you guys to just have a look i think it's a nice one to have it was a really nice cozy book to read um and like i you know i was done reading it in a day but it was a really nice little escape that i would love to go back to quite often I also received another really nice book from Carolyn or Caroline um, that was called Artist to Artist. I've got it just over there. And it's like um, stories, interviews sort of thing um, from the illustrators of like the books of my childhood. It's such an interesting book and such an amazing gift. Thank you so much, Carolyn slash Caroline. Um, just the best, the best thing. I'll have links below as well, or like at least a list below of all the things that I mentioned so you can check it all out. The next book I read was Lent to Me by Lyndon, the same person that lent me this puzzle. Great girl, I must say. Um, and it was called The Miniaturist by Jessie Burton. And it's about this young girl who... Um, I think it's in Amsterdam, but like way back in the day, she marries this really affluent um, guy who's never around. And as a wedding gift, he gets her this like doll's house um, that's like a miniature copy of the house that they're they're living in. And over time, she sort of fills it with figures and actual things from the house. And the figures and things that she gets delivered by this miniaturist, this person that makes these things um, start to almost predict the future. It's really interesting. I just got goosebumps describing it. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was a really interesting book. It was really fun. And as someone that loves miniature things and is obsessed with dolls' houses, it was just perfect for me. Just imagining all the little, the little details. Are we ready to go in with some details on this one? I feel like I probably should. Yeah, I feel like I feel like if we want to get this one done during this video, I need to bite the bullet. But as always, <laughs> I don't do what I say I'm going to do. I love these colours though. Are we still on books? 
Yes. Well, this one we'll cover really quickly. No Exit by Taylor Adams. I think it might have been recommended by one of you guys. Um, I don't know why I bought it. I just had it in my um, Kindle library. Um, so I thought I'd check it out. It's sort of about um, this college student going back for the holidays, I think. Oh no, no. She's going back because her mum's dying in hospital. Sorry, <laughs> got that very wrong. Um, but she ends up at a service station, truck stop type thing. Um, and makes a shocking discovery and all the people around her are suspects to the thing she's found. I don't want to spoil it, um, but it's sort of like a mystery, tense. I didn't love it. Um, <laughs> I found it, this is going to be a weird description and I hope no one takes offence, but I found it really American, like <laughs> the college student type thing and like, I don't know, I can't describe it. That's the only way I can describe it. Um, but yeah, it just, I could see it making a good film. I think just the writing or something about it wasn't for me. It seemed too obvious, that's the thing. And I'm not linking American with obvious, but it had that like feel of like a, like a Grey's Anatomy episode almost. And I say that as someone that loves Grey's Anatomy. Um, it just felt too obvious. I think like the the, your first sort of introduction to the villain. You don't know they're the villain at that point. Now I am gonna kind of spoil it, but just skip. I'll put a timestamp in to when I'm done talking about this book. The first introduction to the villain is like, you meet this like scrawny, greasy guy that's got really bad skin and he's really aloof. So out of all the people in the truck stop that seem like quite normal, then there's this like one guy that really stands out for being gross. And like, I think he farts like, and I thought, okay, that person's being put in to throw us off to make us think that he's going to be the bad guy. No, 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 he was, he was the bad guy. So, but I will say there is more to it. It's not all as it seems. Um, although I did kind of predict all the other things. Apart from right at the end, right at the end. No, there was a thing right at the end that I did sort of sus. But there was one thing just before the end that they got me with, but otherwise, Eh, I could have left it, you know? The one thing was that it was quite short, so whenever I was like, oh, I can't be bothered, I was like, oh, I've only got like 60 pages left, so. I really do need to start, like, putting some details in here, don't I? It's this bit here. If I could just blend that into that, and maybe that into that a bit more. I'm procrastinating though, I know I am. And I don't know why, because I think the detail part is really gonna bring it together. And then the only other book that I think I've read, I'm, I feel like there have probably been more, but these are like the highlights. Um, I just finished American Dirt by Janine. Cummings, which is about a woman and her young son trying to make it to um, America, sort of illegally. She's being pursued and she needs to get out of the country as quickly as possible from Mexico. Did I say that? Um, really interesting, um, quite an insight into the journeys that people have to take to get out of. Was she in Mexico? She didn't start in Mexico. Did she start, was that Mexico? I think, yeah, Acapulco, that's Mexico, right? But it was really well written, um, really like draws you in, it's very tense. It was so hard to read at, at certain points. Um, it was the kind of book that I couldn't keep reading it all the time. I would have to take breaks. Like I, I would read one chapter and then it's like, okay, time for bed, can't do this, can't do this anymore. I think, I think she did a really good job of um, building tension, really making you feel for the characters and get to know the characters. Um, the stakes were really high. It was just all round a really, really good book. Um, really difficult and painful. Uh, yeah, well done. What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing?
I need to stop. All right, and as always, we need to like quickly speed through things that I've been watching. Um, so I started on Kingdom season two, first had to watch through season one with Ozzy again, um, because he hadn't seen the first season I had. He refused to watch it when I first started it, but then he decided he was interested. Now he's not interested anymore after we watched, rewatched the first season. Um, so I need to get back into watching the second season by myself now. Um, We've also been watching a lot of Peaky Blinders. Um, I've just always been in love with Killian Murphy, as I think most people are. Um, but yeah, back in his like Disco Pigs, um, what was the other film? Oh, Breakfast on Pluto days, yeah. I need to stop. I need to just crack on with these details. Um, also watching The Good Place. These are just things that we sort of cycle through um, on different nights, like depending on what kind of mood we're in, but I like The Good Place. I think that's another one that Ozzy's not so keen on, like whenever I suggest we watch it, he's sort of like, oh no. So I'm gonna probably take that one as my own as well, so I don't have to wait for him. Where it all goes wrong. Like someone just take this paintbrush off me so I stop. Alright, that that'll do. That'll no that that bit. <laughs> just bear with me, okay? We're nearly there. See, didn't it need that? Needed. There we go. Also, just well, I say just started. I have just started watching Dark on Netflix, the German series that's so good. Um, I'm already two seasons in, um, just started the third one, but I love that. I think the casting on that is amazing. Um, just everything the acting, the scenery, so good. It's one of my favorite series, is pretty much ever. I think I'm hoping the third and final season doesn't let me down, but yeah, loving it so far, so much. And um, I, do, I feel like I'll rewatch it quite soon. It's the kind of thing that makes sense to rewatch, and because it's only a few seasons, um, it won't be much of a hardship to rewatch the whole thing. So I'm looking forward to actually finishing it and starting it again. I don't normally rewatch a series, but it just seems like I mean, I'm, al I'm just already looking forward to rewatching it. Um, like, I've thought about rewatching Lost but there's just too much of it. And also the standard kind of slips after a certain point with Lost, but oh, I remember when Lost first came out. I remember the advert so clearly, actually. It was on Channel 4 and they're all like 
dancing on a beach and I remember thinking what is this show about they're like dancing around this um plane wreckage um yeah I don't think I'll rewatch Lost is it on is it on any streaming things is it on Netflix um but maybe I'll just rewatch the first few seasons I've also always wanted to rewatch Grey's Anatomy that was another one that I watched from the beginning and absolutely loved uh, but again is that even I think that's still on I just couldn't do it I'm trying to sort of cluster the stars around this central area. Um, Film-wise, I watched The First Wives Club, which is like, I don't know, was that 90s maybe? Um, maybe even more recent, maybe even older. Again, history in any form, don't know. Was it 10 years ago? Was it 20? Was it 30? But it's a film about these three um, middle-aged women whose husbands are just not great to them in different ways and they come together they're all friends they come together to sort of plot against these good for nothing men in their lives um that was a lot of fun i really needed that um i don't know it's i love that kind of film for some reason it was just a good romp it was a good bit of fun um and i really enjoyed it that's going to be like up there in my favorites i would definitely watch that again It's even got like a good empowering musical number at the end. Um, I watched a film, a Spanish film on Netflix called Orbiter 9, which is just my kind of film. I don't know why it hadn't been suggested to me sooner, but it's about this girl who grows up in this space shuttle. She's out in just drifting in space as part of some experiment um and she's there for like 18 plus years or something on her own um after i think her parents die i watched it a while ago so i can't remember but um i won't spoil it i won't spoil it it's a good film though um i think i think it's like a hidden gem because i really hadn't heard anything about it before i watched it And another foreign language hidden gem that I'd never heard about was a film called The Descent? No, The Decline. Jusqu'au Decline. <laughs> um, it's a, I think it's French or Canadian. Um, and it's about these like doomsday preppers that uh, gather together for this um, like learning retreat out in the wilderness held by like the head doomsday prepper. He knows all the stuff, but something goes wrong and they want to get out of the retreat, but they can't. <laughs> It was another good one. If you're gonna watch it, don't watch the trailer on Netflix because that spoiled the entire film. I got to a certain point in the trailer and I thought, I need to turn this off because I know that I'm, I'm finding out too much. There were some scenes at the end of the film, like at the climax of the film, I knew what was gonna happen because I'd seen what happens after. Like, there's a certain point where you think it's gonna go a certain way or you would think it's gonna go a certain way. But I knew it wasn't gonna go that way because I'd seen the trailer. So don't watch the trailer, but watch the film. It's a really good one. I love like doomsday stuff anyway. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. Uh, do I have any, anything else? Yeah, the only other things that I've watched have been sort of like date night things that we've watched little throwaway films. Um, Ocean's Eleven and Twelve, I've seen that quite a few times, but I love, I love that kind of film. I love that style. So that was a fun one to rewatch. And um, True Grit, I watched for the first time. Really enjoyed that. This is really nice. I might do more paintings like this. Um, Lovebirds with uh, Issa Rae and Kamal Nanjani. That was a fun throwaway rom-com, um, a little bit different to the usual, if you haven't seen that yet. I know there was a certain point where people kept talking about that, so if you haven't seen that yet, I would recommend checking it out. It's quite funny. And I think that's about it. I, in the reference photo, there's like silhouette of trees down here. 
that looks quite nice in the photo, but I'm quite happy with how this looks on its own. I don't know what to do. I think we'll leave it. Um, let's see how it looks when I take the tape off. Yeah, I think it looks good without the without the tree line at the bottom. Which means it's safe to take this final bit of tape off. And there we are. That's really, really nice. I'm really pleased with that. And this is going to get sent to one lucky patron, the original um, painting. So thank you guys so much for joining me. It's been really nice to sit and have a chat. Thanks for keeping me company. I have a whole playlist of videos like this if you want to chill out for a bit longer. But otherwise, thanks for being here. Um, take care. Stay inside if you can. And I will speak to you soon. Bye.